In this video, we're going to take a look at the developments that took place in Season 8, Episode 3 of The Curse of Oak Island. But first, I'd like to let you know that, due to repeated requests, I finally decided to sell a batch of signed copies of some of my books. More accurately, I've convinced my friend Jordan, from Sunlit Cave Rare Books, to sell signed copies of my books for me on his online store. Every book that Jordan sells, mine included, is shipped for free. And so, all things considered, you'll actually pay less for a signed copy of one of my books on Jordan's store than you would for an unsigned copy of that same book on Amazon. This is the first time I've done something like this, and I think it may be my last. So if you'd like to acquire a signed copy of one of my books, either for yourself or as a Christmas present for someone else, you may want to get it while it's still available. To see the signed books that we have for sale, please click the link in the description. Season 8 Episode 3 of The Curse of Oak Island begins in the War Room, where the Fellowship of the Dig has congregated to discuss future operations in light of the Lagina Brothers' return to Oak Island. Doug Crowell informs us that the wall which Dr. Ian Spooner discovered in the southeastern corner of the swamp the previous episode via sonar scan is actually the top of a 9 foot by 9 foot shaft. Rick Lagina then describes Fred Nolan's initial discovery of this feature years ago saying, quote, Fred surreptitiously drew the swamp down. Dan confronts him, makes him fill it back in. And then Fred says to Dan, Hey, did you see that shaft over there in the corner of the swamp? Unquote. The treasure hunters all agree that they ought to excavate this mysterious feature. Rick suggests that, during this excavation, they ought to process the spoils at the wash plant so that they don't miss any artifacts hidden therein. After the War Room meeting, Rick Lagina, Marty Lagina, and Doug Crowell meet with Scott Barlow, Billy Gerhardt, and Dr. Ian Spooner at the Oak Island Swamp. We learn that the Fellowship plans to excavate the anomaly which Spooner identified through the use of a cofferdam, which will isolate the swamp's southeastern corner from the rest of the wetland. The treasure hunters agree that the project may be even more difficult than the operation conducted at Smith's Cove the previous season, prompting Marty to facetiously hand Gerhardt his wallet, saying, quote, Here you go, Billy. Might as well just have it right now, unquote. Later in the episode, members of the Oak Island crew congregate in the war room to Skype with representatives of Irving Equipment Limited, namely General Manager David Irving, Pile Driving Manager Matthew Kingston, and Research and Development Executive Patrick Craig. The men discuss the logistics of the upcoming cofferdam operation in the swamp, which Irving has been tasked with overseeing. We learn that Irving will have to build a 1,600 square foot crane pad on the road which skirts the swamp's southern edge, in order to place the 89 steel sheets of which the cofferdam will comprise. David Irving informs the treasure hunters that his crew should be able to start working on the project in a month. During the War Room meeting at the beginning of the episode, Marty Lagina informed us that Laird Niven, Aaron Taylor, and David McInnes recently uncovered a layer of rocks beneath the Tar Kiln on Lot 15, which seemed to indicate that the feature may be more than just a Tar Kiln, as previously suspected. Later in the episode, David McInnes and a new archaeologist named Liz Meekles show these new rocks to Rick and Marty Lagina. McKinnis declares that these stones, quote, look like they've been thrown in by a person to fill in a well, unquote, apparently suggesting that the feature, in light of this new discovery, might not be the remains of a tar kiln as previously believed, but rather a backfilled well. Marty Lagina then offers his own suggestion that the feature might be the backfilled entrance of an underground tunnel, as Fred Nolan's survey map indicates. With the help of the Lagina brothers, the archaeologists proceed to remove the nether stones from the trench. Later in the episode, the archaeologists and the Lagina brothers remove a huge boulder from the mysterious structure on Lot 15 with a backhoe, revealing an adjacent jumble of rocks. The archaeologists state that these new rocks appear to have been placed by man, and declare that they would like to excavate them in a slow archaeological manner. At the transitory beginning of the next scene, we hear David McInnes, while working in his trench, mention, quote, This whole place is covered with fire-cracked rock, unquote fire-cracked rock being an archaeological term for rock deliberately split through the application of heat. While the Lagina brothers and the archaeologists labor on Lot 15, Alex Lagina meets with artifact conservator Kelly Barassa at the Oak Island Research Center. Alex shows Kelly the coin with a square hole, which Gary Drayton and Jack Begley found on Oak Island's Lot 15 back in the Season 8 premiere. The conservator immediately suggests that the artifact might be of Chinese origin. 
He examines the object under a microscope, but fails to see any clear markings on its surfaces. He then takes high-quality photographs of both sides of the artifact, beside an L-shaped ruler, which shows the coin to have a diameter of about 2.4 centimeters, and then cleans its faces with a toothbrush. Although Barassa manages to remove some green copper tarnish from the artifact's faces, he fails to reveal evidence of any characters which one might expect to find on a Chinese coin, although he does uncover what appears to be a coin-like edge. Meanwhile, Gary Drayton and Jack Begley do some metal detecting on Lot 15, the same lot on which they discovered the possible Chinese coin and the rigging axe back in Season 8, Episode 1. As they work their way towards the swamp, the pair uncovers what Drayton identifies as, quote, a large broken ox shoe, unquote, from a draft ox. In a later interview, Drayton implies that this artifact may be evidence of a hauling operation, in which heavy objects were transported between the money pit area and the swamp. The treasure hunters resume their scanning operation and find another smaller ox shoe nearby. Jack Begley observes that a line drawn through the two ox shoes would intersect both the paved area in the swamp and the stone structure on Lot 15, suggesting that those two landmarks may have once been connected to each other by a wagon trail. Shortly thereafter, Gary and Jack find a third iron object, which Drayton identifies as a component of an ox cart. Later in the episode, we learn that another of Gary's theories is that this item constitutes a piece of a harness. The treasure hunters agree that they must have stumbled upon some old ox trail, along which heavy objects were hauled. Later in the episode, Jack Bagley and Alex Lagina pay a visit to Carmen Legg at his new shop in Centerville, Nova Scotia, and show him the ox shoes from Lot 15. The blacksmithing expert declares that one of the artifacts is a British winter shoe, intended to cover the outside half of an ox's left front hoof. He dates the artifact from 1650 to 1750. When prompted by Alex, Legg states that the shoe could have been used by the British military. When prompted by Jack, the blacksmithing expert affirms that the shoe was distinctly British, differing in style from other German and French ox shoes which the treasure hunters have brought to him in the past, apparently in scenes which never made it into the final cut of the show. Indeed, these artifacts are not the first animal shoes to be discovered on Oak Island. Back in Season 5, Episode 8, the Lagina brothers, Dave Blankenship, and Gary Drayton discovered a horseshoe on Lot 16 which Drayton dismissed as a relic of Oak Island's agricultural past. In the Season 7 premiere, the treasure hunters discovered a number of ox shoes off-camera, two of which Leg, in a war room meeting, declared to be of 18th century English manufacture. Following Leg's interpretation of the first ox shoe, Jack Begley and Alex Lagina show the blacksmithing expert another of the ox shoes from Lot 15. Leg states that this object is also a winter shoe, but made for a larger animal probably by the same smith who crafted the first shoe. Leg then examines the third ox shoe, which he states is a summer shoe, intended for a posterior hoof. He opines that this third shoe was probably made by the same smith who crafted the other two shoes. When informed that the three ox shoes were found on the same hypothetical trail, connecting the Lot 15 structure with the paved wharf in the swamp, Carmen Leg expresses his opinion that some major industrial operation took place in the area. In order to find these many shoes along that route, he says, means that there was a major activity. Transportation of something going on back and forth there. It's very unusual. It sounds like industry going on there. It wasn't a couple of days. It was several months, over a winter and summer period." Unquote. Finally, Leg examines the heavy iron pin found on Lot 15, which Gary Drayton identified as a piece of a harness or a component of an ox cart. Legg similarly declares the object to be, quote, a finial on the top of an ox cart, unquote. Finials being ornaments affixed to the ends of furniture and horse-drawn vehicles. He further suggests that, if the object is indeed a finial, it would have been part of a military ox cart, as opposed to that of a civilian, because military men are, quote, the only ones that would use any scroll work or knob work on their ox cart, unquote. Later that afternoon, the Fellowship of the Dig meets outside the Oak Island Interpretive Center apparently as a safety precaution in light of the pandemic. Alex Lagina and Jack Begley inform their fellow treasure hunters of Carmen Legg's interpretation of the ox shoes found on Lot 15. Alex explains that, in a scene which failed to make it into the final cut of this episode, Legg informed him and Jack that oxen would typically wear out a pair of shoes in three months. And we're finding all kinds of them, Alex says. So his thought was, that's indicative of a lot of activity, unquote. 
Alex goes on to inform the Fellowship of Legg's assessment that the ox shoes are evidence of military or large-scale industrial activity, rather than agricultural activity. Gary Drayton agrees with Legg's interpretation, noting that Lot 15 is too rocky to make for productive farmland. Alex Lagina then produces the artifact which Gary Drayton thought might be a piece of a harness, and which Legg identified as a finial from a military ox cart. The treasure hunters agree that they ought to remove some of the rust which coats the object's head in order to more conclusively determine its nature. It is perhaps worth mentioning, on account of the ox shoes discovered this episode, that the most famous incident involving oxen on Oak Island is the discovery of the cave-in pit. One day in 1875, Sophia Sellers, the daughter of Oak Island farmer and landowner Anthony Graves, whom local folklore says owned a mysterious collection of old gold and silver coins, was out plowing her father's field east of the money pit with a team of oxen. The ground on which the oxen and plow stood suddenly gave way, as if the earth beneath had sunk into some sort of subterranean void. The ox team disappeared into a ten-foot-deep pit, which, when measured, turned out to be seven feet in diameter, roughly the same size as the money pit. Subsequent investigation showed the sinkhole to be located 350 feet east of the money pit, precisely along the line of a supposed Smith's Cove flood tunnel. Ever since its discovery, this mysterious feature, which some believe to be an air shaft created by the flood tunnel builders, has been called the cave-in pit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to help support this channel, please check out my signed books, which you can find by clicking the link in the description.